Yes. Once again, it's on. And it is truly a pleasure. The Bulls is back better than ever. And today we're stepping it up a little bit because we in some other shit right now. <laughs> it's the ball, sleeves the hustler all day long. Got my man style, the stizza, a.k.a. Brother Byron, the militant one. You know how we do. And the cut's all smoothed out, you know what I'm saying? He done put a shirt over top of the T-shirt. Look at the ball tie, oh. a.k.a. Sky Ree. You know how we doing up in here, man. And as I said, this is a pleasure because this setting is magnificent. That's what we try to bring to you all the time. And we're in a black-owned wine company. You understand what I'm saying? Let me repeat that again. Brothers owned wine company. Uh, you dig? And brothers one and sisters. Brothers and sisters. <laughs> black owned, bottom line. And we want to introduce our good brother here and let him tell you a little bit about where we at right now. What's going on? I'm Lamar Covert. Um, I'm a partner, Black Oak Tasting Room. I am a certified sommelier by way of the National Wine School via the Wine School of Philadelphia. Um, yeah, man, appreciate y'all guys. Y'all coming. You heard that? You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Like, listen, appreciate you having this, dog. Like, real rap. Like, this, as soon as I came in this joint, I said, mm, I feel like I should have had, like, a tux on or something. But I'm sorry, you know what I'm saying? But I'm chilling because it's laid back. I'm looking at him, and he's like, all right, cool. He about to school us on some things right now. You know what I mean? Definitely. Yeah, this, uh, this is the culture's classroom. So, you know, we... we it might not be so buttoned up in here at times because mm -hmm. we want to make sure that, um, you know, we, we identify with the people who come in here. You know, a lot of times you may get turned off when you get discouraged when you see people with these suits on and these ties and they don't speak the language you speak. So mm -hmm. um, when you come in here, we want people to feel a little more comfortable. And that I do. I'm sure we all do. Yeah. Definitely. It's, it's elegant. Absolutely, <laughs> man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Definitely. Here. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm definitely very comfortable. <laughs> this, is, this is really nice. The ambiance, everything. Mm -hmm. Chef's right. kiss. Right. Exactly. exactly. What I'm saying, exactly. Know, yeah. When he said ambiance, he did this. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That's, exactly. Yeah. That's what it means. What I'm saying in here is that oomph, man. But Miss, Mr. Cooper. Yes, yes, sir. Let's get to it. Black Oak Wine Club. Black Oak Wine Club. How long has it been here? So what made you want to start it? Ooh. Absolutely. That's so we officially so opened to the public October 2021. Um, how did we get started? Oh man, it's a hell of a story. So, my uh, my partner Ebony, Ebony, shout out to Ebony. Shout out to Ebony. <laughs> Look forward to meeting you. Thank shout you. Shout out to Ebony. You know, um, you know, go get her, do her, like you know, however it needs to get done, she's gonna do it. Mm -hmm. So me and Eb, um, well Eb and my other partner Amir, they used to go to like um, vineyards, wineries every weekend. It was like on Sundays that you go to, you know. So you, they would invite, invite me out. So we came up on this winery upstate PA and some of the best wine that we had in PA. Mm -hmm. So we made a, a connection with the winemakers and they said, listen, you ever want to make a wine, you know, we'll do it for you. So they were doing this program where you can get like a barrel, or half a barrel, or a quarter barrel, it was up to you. Nice. Um, so me and Ab started having this conversation about starting a wine. And literally, um, maybe like the second time we had a phone call about it, she said, listen, you know what? Um, we should start this company that focuses on black-owned wine brands. So at first, you know, I was kind of like, listen, I just want to make a wine. Like, I wasn't, you know, I'm not there. She's like, listen, I'm telling you. You know, and this was around the time, you know, George Floyd happened mm -hmm. um, in the, the Buy Black movement. Yep. What was going on? Mm -hmm. And she said, listen, we're finding out a, about a lot of uh, black and white brands through social media. And I feel like, you know, it needs to be a space to tell the stories of these black and white brands. Mm -hmm. All right, okay. Like, you know, mm -hmm. do it. Like, right. let's get it done. Mm -hmm. It was like a day later, man. It was an LLC. It was a website <laughs> being created. Go um, get it. Yeah. She was on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. She was on it. Um, and and she, was, she was on it so quickly that, like, you know, myself and the other partners early on, it was like, yo, 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 like, you moving kind of fast. We got to really, you know, gather ourselves and figure out what's going on here. But, um, you know, everybody came together. We figured it out. 
Um, we were sitting on this space for a little while. Um, you know, we were sitting here mm-hmm. and just looked at the walls and be like, well, how are we going to do this? Right. Mm-hmm. You know, what is this going to look like? I'm going to show you all a picture when this is over, but, like, I, we don't know what to do. Um, I'm talking to my bartender friends, like, yo, I need to set up a bar. I want to put the, the hanging glasses from the ceiling. Because when you came in, it was just four walls. It was just four walls. Right, exactly. It was just four walls. Um, you know, and every- you knew it was going to be a risk. Yes. <sighs> With anything. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, we were sitting down doing budgets, like, okay, how are we going to find this money? Like, how are we going to do this? Luckily, um, you know, we, we had a mutual connection with a, a friend of ours, uh, Jakai. So, actually, her name is D-I-Y Jakai. Uh, J-A-K-A-I. D-I-Y Jakai. Um, she specializes in, um, she's very resourceful. Mm-hmm. So, you know, D-I-Y, of course, mm-hmm. resourceful. Um, like, this was like, this was an old door. <laughs> okay. Oh, <right. laughs> yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Um, so she came in, she pieced everything together. Man, that wall didn't look like that. Mm-hmm. She painted over the, you know, over the bricks. Mm-hmm. Um, everything. And as you can see, these are doors that she yeah. put, you know, you know, so she made everything possible, man. She made it happen. Um, you know, God sent because when she came in here, she said, listen, all right, boom, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. And Wait, we like, hold up. You know how deep in that just, was just a door. Exactly. <laughs> I thought it was a pathway somewhere until he said that shit, and it gave me kind of. So, so it's not another dimension. Yeah, yeah, yeah okay. She is the, the funny part is, um, people have come in here and they looked at this door and thought that they were walking into the tasting room. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah, like this is the bar area uh-huh. that's going to go in the tasting room. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 yeah, I literally so, thought it was right. for a second right. too. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah man. Yeah. So, um, you know, everybody pretty much had a hand in it. She did the most of the work, but, you know, my partner, uh, Kevin, you know, Kev, he came in, did some of the heavy work. Um, I did the corks around the window. Um, uh, Amir, Eb, they added their touches to it as well. So we made it happen, man. Oh, we man, made it happen. Right, and man. she, we got this done in like a month. Wow. Like from, nice. from, from what it was to this, we got this done in like a month, man. That's you know? what happened when the team come together. Man. Yeah. You know, you, know you need somebody with vision to, to see it because mm-hmm. I, I guess we were so overwhelmed with starting a wine business and then trying to find the money and just like, I would have thought you'd have been worried about the target audience. Like, we're trying to target black folk, mm-hmm. and maybe black folk ain't into wine like this and wine tasting. So yes, that's yes. why I said, like, you knew it was a little risk. But, you know, it's good, it's good to take those risks. Well, we're in Rockville. Right. Mm-hmm. So there's no wine. It, it, a lot of the, uh, the stores up and down here, a lot of restaurants, they're BYOB. Oh, yeah. So there's not a lot of wine culture mm-hmm. in Rockville mm-hmm. at all. Mm-hmm. Um, Ebony and I, we both come from nightlife. You know, so we have a built-in audience already. Mm-hmm. So we knew that we could be able to pull that audience here, but at the same time, we can kind of bank on the foot traffic mm-hmm. coming from the area. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so right now, like I said, um, we 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 can't use that foot traffic just yet because we haven't got the licensing that we need to actually sell wine by the glass. Mm-hmm. But the tickets, you know, the events we do that. So mm-hmm. is that know. just like a regular liquor license, or is there something else to it? No, 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 no that's something else. It's not, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something totally different. <laughs> Something totally different. Two yes. part question. I'm, yes, I'm sure you got this written down, but um, how does one become a sommelier? And it's just the coolest word. Like, I feel like. I I'm not saying it. Is it a sommelier? I like it. I feel like if I told my I mom, need you to say it again. Like, that's why I didn't bring you in saying that shit. This is what I'm doing. I can hear her talking to people like, Tom's a Somalian. Like, this is like, if I have a of the question. Yes. How does one become a sommelier, and, and were you one, and you created this, or did you create this and like, well, I should become one? So, and can we drink this as you speak? Yeah, 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 you can drink it as you speak. So, what you're drinking right now is a Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, it uh, originates in France, <coughs> in um, the Bordeaux, Bordeaux region of France. Um, so... When we get to the second wine, you'll be able to see the differences okay. between these two. But I want y'all to taste it, and then you know I'll, I'll but begin. Wait, but wait, but hold on, hold on. Me too. What's up? I know we gotta do like a little swirl or something. All right, we can get into it now. We can get into it now. So ultimately, I've seen them work before. I've seen them work. <laughs> so for one, you hold your glass by the stem. Okay. You don't hold it by the bowl. You hold it by the stem. Yeah. Okay. So bowl, stem, base. You hold it by the stem. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, the reason why we hold it by the stem is because. 
especially whites, uh, which are served between 40 and 55 degrees, if you do this, you warm it up. Right. And your body temperature is 98 degrees. So whites being chilled, like serving them chilled, that's when you get the true expression of the aromas of it, to smell it, and then also taste it. So if you taste a white wine that's too warm, it's not going to taste the way that the winemaker intended it to taste like, mm -hmm. and it's not going to smell the way it's supposed to smell. Mm -hmm. And your olfactory senses in your nose, they actually tell you what you're about to taste. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have to smell wine before you taste it. Um, so yes, you, you mentioned swirling your wine. Um, though your wine is usually in that bottle upwards of like a whole year. See, I've been afraid to do <laughs> tornado <laughs> bottles. Yeah, exactly. you know, we over here like, oh shit, I almost feel nothing. Yeah. Exactly. It's <laughs> um, <laughs> even hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's in that bottle upwards of a whole year before it even hits the shelf. So it's very, um, it's muted. Like if you go to, if you buy a bottle of wine, you open it up, it's going to smell like alcohol. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So that's why you swirl it. You want to open it up. You want to get, you know, you want to agitate it basically and get the aromas out. And when you get those aromas out, you can smell it, and then that lets you know this is what I'm about to taste. Right. So you know, if you go into a restaurant, you order a glass of wine, and you know what, uh, let's say Chardonnay smells and tastes like, mm -hmm. you'll be able to know that they gave you the wrong glass because yes. you know yeah. what the Sauvignon Blanc smells and tastes like versus the Chardonnay. Right. Yes. Right. Um, and this is what you learn when you become. Yeah. Yes, yes, part of it, part of it, yes. So, um, well, back to that winery that I was talking about where we got the idea to make um, a wine. Um, one of the winemakers, he, um, we, would, we would, you know, talk a lot. And at some point he said, listen, man, every time I talk to you, you, uh, you seem to know what you're talking about. So, you know, are you in the industry? What do you do? Blah, blah. Like, no, I don't work in the wine industry at all. You know, I just love wine. Right. Um, I just have a, I just have a thirst for knowledge, I guess, right? Mm -hmm. um, anything I do, I dive in. <laughs> wine quenches it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I dive in 100%. He said, listen, you should go to school because um, no disrespect. And mind you, you know, it's, it's white guy. Mm -hmm. He said, if you sit down and talk to this 60 year old man who thinks he knows everything and he can afford these like amazing bottles of wine and you're telling him what you know and you know, you're telling him about these wines and these, these countries and these regions and things like that, he's going to write you off. Mm -hmm. He said, you need the paperwork to back you up. Right. Mm -hmm. He said, if you get into this industry as a black man, basically, you need the paperwork to back you up. Um, he was like, you know, we can sit here and have this conversation. I get it. I know you love it, right. mm -hmm. but you want to be able to stand on something. Sure. So he said, go to school. Go to school. Um, How long ago was this? Exactly. That's what I'm going to say. Yeah. So, How um, long school? School, well, school is, depends on how, it depends on what level. Okay. So there's levels to being a sommelier. So some people say sommelier, some people say sommelier. You may hear people say sommelier if they're from France. So, um. That's the first time I heard it, so that's the way I said it. Mm -hmm. Sommelier. Um, so, sommelier, uh, you have introductory, which is level one. You have certified, which is level two. You have advanced, which is level three, and then master at level four. Mm. Um, once you get to master, it, it it's up to you how long it takes because you have to study. Right. You have to prepare for this master exam to get that level of diploma. Just like a trade thing. Too. Yes, yes, basically. Mm -hmm. So, um... I, uh, I passed my certified, that took about, I want to say, that was, it was eight weeks. Okay. okay. Eight weeks on certified. Um, I didn't take introductory because I knew it already. Mm -hmm. And the school I went to, Wine School of Philadelphia, you don't have to take introductory to take certified. Okay. Okay. Certified is level two? Level two. Okay. Yes. Um, <coughs> well, I'll break it down. Level two and three at Wine School of Philadelphia is on par with level two of other schools. Okay. Gotcha. My the the teacher uh, Keith Wallace he broke down level two mm -hmm. into two parts. So it's theory and then it's also um, it's it's like tasting. Mm -hmm. So it's all the theory behind it, the country, the region, things like that. Then it's also the tasting portion of it. So identifying what the wine looks like, what it smells like what it tastes like, things like that. He broke that down into two parts. So you have to pass level two and three 
to be label certified. Whereas though in the other uh, the other schools you may go to or the other accreditation agencies that you get your um, certifications from, mm -hmm. they just have a level two. Okay. You, you understand? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So technically, master at Wine School of Philadelphia is level five. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like level one, level two, and three. Right. Mm -hmm. Level four, four, level five. Is that something yes. you plan on pursuing? Master. You think it's necessary in the business? So I think master is necessary if you want to work in a restaurant. If you if you want to be, you know, creme de la creme in the restaurant, you should go master. Um, it also has other benefits to it, you know, working with like distributors or importers or, you know, major companies like that. But if you just want to go into the business of wine, the wine industry, mm -hmm. um, I don't think you have to go master. Uh, you know, I had, I had my, um, my days of pondering that, like, should I go master? It's only three master psalms in the world. Wow. In the world. Three black men mm -hmm. okay. in the world. Yes. Wow. Um, that's another level. That's a whole another level when you speak in that right there. Thank you. Yeah, so um, <laughs> it's three master psalms in the world. Mm. So because of that, mm -hmm. as far as status quo, I, I thought about that. Like, damn, you know, should I go do this? I was going to ask you, how many other black sommeliers? I like sommeliers. <laughs> how many other black sommeliers have you come across? Not many. Mm. Mm. Yeah. The, the other three, I've watched them on documentaries. Right, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never them on tape. Yeah, I've never, <laughs> I've never, real life. Yeah. I've never met them before. Mm -hmm. No, I've never met them before. Um, mm -hmm. There are some black women sommeliers in the industry, mm -hmm. but when we say master level, it's only three black men, that's it. Right. You know, everybody else, you know, is Asian, Italian, French, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um. It was an untapped industry for black people. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought about master, but um, I, I don't. I technically feel like I don't need it. Mm -hmm. I don't need it to be in the wine industry. Right. Mm -hmm. Like to go into business in the wine industry, I don't need it. No. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, six months from now, I may feel differently. Sure. So you know, and you, you, you don't know what may come from that. If, you, if you're, you, you're running business and then you go become a master, so now it's like major press at that point because. Mm -hmm. Oh damn! Look, it's another black master psalm in the world, mm -hmm. you know. And at that point, I mean, I, I, I think one of them is the same age as me, so I would still be on par with like the age range that they're in. But just the fact that there's another black master psalm yeah. that will come with a lot, you know. But we'll see. We'll see. I mean, heavy is the head, man. And if you, you know, <laughs> really, like you know what I mean? It's all yes. like you said. You love teaching yourself and getting that knowledge. So that's something that's going to eat you up eventually. Just like having that. You just said it's only three. Yeah. It's so only three. I could be the four. True. You feel what I'm saying? At some point. I mean, of course, that's your time. But yeah, that's dope. You know what I mean? Does your I feel uncouth? What's up? Does Does your palate does it become more palate? Yes. Yes. Palette. Yes. Palette. Exactly. Palette. You understand where we are? We're using the right terminology. Sophisticated <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Mm -hmm. Does your palate become more sophisticated over time? Are you like training yourself to notice different hints? You feel like you're drinking Kool Aid right now or something like? What's I feel thing? like if you gave me another glass of Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Sauvignon Blanc. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. If you poured me oui. another glass. I might not really be able to differentiate between two according to the different ingredients in the wine. Mm -hmm. Where someone like him, who has a very cultured palate, mm -hmm. would probably point out <laughs> hints of wild berry and oak, bourbon <laughs> <laughs> barrel casks, uh -huh. and all so that. What, what I'll do is this. Now, you so. we're going to do this, and then I'm going to move on to something that's totally different. This is the same drink? Same thing. Okay. So take a swirl of it, and now smell it, and put like, put your whole nose in the glass like this. Like, don't be shy. Yeah, mm -hmm. put your whole nose in the glass. What do you smell? Don't try to say the right answer, just say the first thing that comes to your mind. What do you smell? Fruit. Uh, yeah. I smell some flowers. Okay, boom. Flowers, white flowers. Okay. You hold the glass wrong. If it's easier, put it on the table and do this. Yeah. Just use the base of the glass. Oh, oh, Jamal, can we, we got to get time to go splash on the side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I got it. I got it. 
I left some in the bottle. For he was him. about to be like. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you smell? <sighs> Alcohol. See, he said from the street. Right, right, right. 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 From the street yeah. answer. That was a street yeah. answer. Right. Yes, yeah, so it comes out a little bit. Yeah, I, you already took the answers. I'm not going to bite off of your answers. Like, like, so like, listen, like, it's never, I mean, I don't, it's never a wrong answer. Yeah, it's never a wrong like, answer. I feel like I don't know what citrus fruit, but it's got like a. You don't have to identify. Citrus, you know, fruity yeah. kind of tone to it. Yeah, grapefruit. That's what, that's like, what I got. We go. Yeah, so we go. Yeah. Yes, grapefruit. Grapefruit. Lemon, lime, grapefruit. Right. You said white flowers, right? Mm-hmm. So, over time, you get you get better because you practice. Mm-hmm. Like for you for for you to be a psalm, and now I have to come in here and I have to teach, or I have somebody calls me and say, "Hey, I'm eating this tonight. What should I, you know, drink with it?" Mm-hmm. I have to practice to be able to do that, right? You can't depend on Kobe in the fourth corner. If Kobe wasn't practicing all day, mm-hmm. right? So it's the same thing. You know, you, you every day it's, I'm going to pour myself one ounce of, I'm going to smell it, I'm going to taste it, I'm going to sit with it. How does it feel? You know, um, what does it taste like? What does it smell like? What does it look like? You, you know, you have to break those things down. Um, so, yes, your palate becomes, uh, you train your palate over time, right? And that just comes from experience. It comes from tasting Simple. It's tasting. Over bottle. Yeah, shooting in the gym. It. Yeah, shoot in the the gym. gym. Yeah, like, that's really, what, that's really what it is. That's Open that it. bottle, you taste it, you smell it. All right, boom. Let me get something else that's a little different and put it next to it. Right. Let me smell that. Okay, so now I see the differences. Like, somebody said this one smelled like grapefruit, but somebody said that this one smelled like butter. Right? Yeah. You got to put them side by side. Right. Like, the best way to taste wine is put them side by side. Mm. Yes. You that with my wife. So every day, every day, 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 day. So to piggyback off of that real quick, like he was talking about the palate, I'm a foodie boy. So what, particularly, <laughs> real rap? You know what I'm saying? What well, if I had the Sauvignon Blanc? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? What do I want to prepare with this? You know what I'm saying? To get the situation going. So light, light. So it's light body. Mm-hmm. It's white wine. It's acidic. It's not a heavy white wine. Mm-hmm. So when you start talking about pairing foods, you got to figure out how does one not overpower the other one. Gotcha. So how does this wine still live while I'm basically chewing my food? Mm-hmm. Chilean sea bass. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you can always go with a flaky white fish. You, <laughs> can, you can go with seafood, <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. You know, you go with seafood. You go with, um, you know, yeah, 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 yeah. Clams or your oysters gotcha. or you know your like cod or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, yeah, no, you just gave me right? a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's all I need, right? Well, um, exactly. Whereas though, if you had something that was French, you know, French food is very heavy. It's creamy, right? right? right, right. Mm-hmm. It may overpower that. Gotcha. So you know, it, it, it's all about the marriage when you start pairing wine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I like it. So like yes. you see what you see the color of your wine, it was very it looked like water almost. Mm-hmm. Whereas though this is more like gold, mm-hmm. right? The Chardonnay. That's mm-hmm. Sauvignon Blanc. Mm-hmm. It's different. Mm-hmm. Right? It's different in color. Smooth it out now. Right? That ain't the same real quick. Well, all right, like right. ass boss. Feels so cultured in here, man. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So we drink it, you, you still drink it white, you don't, you don't have to rinse your glass out. You mess up the pH in the glass when you start pouring water in the glass, it don't matter. Okay. Um, Good but to know. This is actually black owned. This is uh, Charles Wilson. Oh, uh, yeah. right on. Nice. nice. So which y'all understand why it's called Intercept, right? Ah, ah, nice. Ah, <laughs> I got to get there. You know what I mean? Intercept. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so this, is, uh, this is black owned. This is a Chardonnay. Um, now, when somebody says wine has legs, what does that mean? Legs. So basically, wine has legs. It means the the alcohol in the wine. You can already see it's darker, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? Um, it's alcohol. It's alcohol. It's al- alcohol in the in the wine, which means it had a, the content. Yeah, the alcohol content in the wine, basically. So when you swirl in your, gla- your glass and you start seeing like 
those legs or what we would call tears, they're falling down your glass. That's what it is. That's just letting you know the alcohol percentage in the wine, basically. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yep. So I'm not gonna lie, I can answer something that has like a lot of legs. Um, is that how you ask? Like, sir, this is an I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> uh, yeah. It's, I want my wine we got to no, oh, the box joints in the it's, back. It's, it's, it's not how you ask. <laughs> I would just say something that has high alcohol percentage. Okay. Right? Um, you tell a psalm at a restaurant, like, hey, I'm looking for something that's, you know, I'm, I'm looking for a full body wine. Right? That's Usually a full body wine has a higher alcohol percentage. <coughs> so I want something that's full in body. So as you taste that, you'll you'll see the difference in how it feels. Yeah. When you the other joint was like real crisp and, and fruity and exactly. white. And this it's one it's got so a little heavier. This yeah, is yeah, dry. It tastes heavier too. Yeah. It's just Whatever the hell heavier too. means, it tastes that way exactly. too. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. To me, it's a little bit drier. And it's, so it's not drier. Okay. It's not drier. It's all, all the wines are dry. Mm -hmm. So that was just more acidic. Yeah. It was more crisp. It was more okay. refreshing. Whereas though this one is like a little warmer, right? It's a little warmer. rounder. It's a little smoother. Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what the difference is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now that first wine that we had, could you have that with a higher alcohol content and still have that same taste? Or if you were looking for a higher content, would you go towards the Chardonnay? So, Sauvignon Blanc, you're not going to get that much higher in okay. alcohol percentage. Right. Okay. Um, even if it came from somewhere warm. So basically, sugar in the grape is equal to alcohol percentage. Yeah. So the more sugar in your grape, the higher alcohol mm. percentage you're going to have. Um, Sauvignon Blanc, they usually come from cooler climate. Okay. So when you think cooler, you think of less sun. You need sun to ripen, right? So it's not going to be that high alcohol. Mm. Um, <coughs> Chardonnay, usually Chardonnay that's made in the U.S. It goes through a, um, a process that makes it like that that creaminess, that that that, that smoothness to it. Um, it almost smells like buttery a little bit. Mm. Like swirl it and smell it a little bit and let me know what you smell. I usually don't tell people what they're supposed to smell because then right. it's in your mind. Right. Don't be the witness. Right? Yeah. Apple. apple. Yes, you definitely smell apple. It's like buttery. It's like a butterscotch, or maybe like think of like popcorn, like yeah. popcorn butter. Yeah, like that synthetic butter, you know. But that depends on the winemaker. Depends on the winemaker. Yeah. Now I know we were talking earlier off camera. We were talking about how there's a lot of women that come in. Yes, wine. a lot of women. How do you get more men in here? <laughs> <laughs> wine? Like they said that. I mean, you can't lose <laughs> half of the target audience. You know, like I know, how right? do you how um, do you draw us in? So <laughs> it's hard, man, because follow the women. <laughs> you would think, right? You know what I'm saying that's you, you, not. you would think you follow the women. <laughs> you know, um, it's like going to the club. It's right? like, yeah, that, that's where they at. Why that's the club where they at. That's exactly. the club I'm gonna go to. Um, so I think it's just all about marketing and promotion. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this month we have a class called uh, cognac and Co cognac and cabernet. Mm. So trying to implement. You know, more of what a man would prefer mm -hmm. to get him in the door. Mm -hmm. That way, you know, you say, okay, now that you're here, right. you slide it in. Why don't you try this? Why don't you try that? Uh, you know, most of us, we don't, we don't grow up with wine. Right. You know, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't grow up with wine culture. Like, we, we from the hood. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like. The streets. Yeah. So, you know, wine is not promoted in our neighborhoods. There's no billboards about <laughs> wine. It's, it's Carrazier. Or yeah. Taylor's Port is the only thing that's <laughs> right. disgusting. Yeah. But like, no, but look, I'm yeah. glad you said that because I was going to say to you, you being the uh, the expert in the area, right? So let's say. There's, nothing, there's no experts. Well, no experts. Yeah. Yeah. Well educated. Yes, yes, yes. I always tell people there's no experts because wine changes all the time. All the time. All the time. Wine is dynamic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, say, Ty like whiskey. Mm hmm. Maybe you like whiskey. Great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, but is there any good. type of relationship somewhere where there's a wine that might. Be reminiscent some way of a, of a whiskey with its flavors, or not really. I would um, recommend like a, a port, okay. not 
not tailored for it, right. but just a a better port. You know, you have like a ruby port and you have tawny port. Like tawny port is just aged longer. I didn't know. Like, listen, that's class right there. I, <laughs> no real shit. Because I Taylor's port, I just thought that's that nut ass Taylor's port. Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know it was like a a port gang. Like you, you yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? Like a port. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Ports. Different yeah, yeah. varieties yes. of the ports. Yeah, and we're not talking about new ports. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, um, shit. So you know, you, Sorry, you know, shit. ruby. Ruby port is, you know, more on the, you'll get more expression of the fruit. Okay. Whereas the Tony port, it's aged, it's 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. So, um, and it's barrel aged. Mm. So just like your whiskey, it's barrel aged, okay. it's the same yeah. thing. So if you want some um, port, you need that Tony. I need that aged. Tony, yeah, yeah, yeah Tony, I need that uh, Tony. Uh, mm. Tony mm-hmm. port, it's aged. Um, you know, you pick up some of that, that vanilla, that cinnamon, um, mm-hmm. those cocoa flavors, things like that, pretty much the same as in whiskey. Like, if you put a drop of ice in your whiskey and swirl it, you, you, you'll pull out more aromas of it. Mm-hmm. You drink whiskey straight, mm-hmm. you smell one thing, but once you let that ice hit it, you'll smell a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, so, I would say a port, you know, there is... I, 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 That's the closest thing to bridging the gap. Yeah, I, I, I never like to um, tell people, like, drink this wine if you drink this. Right. Mm-hmm. It's just a different ball game. Mm-hmm. It's a different ball game. You know, you would always try to direct somebody to like a, a fuller red wine, a Cabernet, or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, but there's no comparison. Okay. There's no comparison. Mm-hmm. It's like you, you on this side of the fence, you on this side of the fence. Mm-hmm. You know, and the reason why I say port, because port is um, you get a high alcohol percentage. Right. You know, most wines you add. The the, the, the the force the more full body. Yeah, the fullest of wine you get to is like <laughs> four, 14, 5, 15, right? right? Port, you're going to get around the 20 mark, mm-hmm. 20%. Oh, that's why they're going out putting crazy. Crazy. <laughs> down there. Yeah, that's why they're going to have gone crazy. <laughs> it's, uh, it, has, um, it has brandy in it. Okay. Mm. That's why a port puts you where you need to be because yeah. it has brandy in it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes. It's a secret ingredient. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Port comes from Portugal, Portuguese grapes. And it has brain. I'm saying, I'm saying, like, real shit, though. I literally just look at Taylor's port differently now. I still look at it ain't, like ain't shit, but yeah, in a different it, way. Yeah, like, right. you feel what I'm saying? Like, I mean, you, so, can put, you put port in the same category as, like, Barefoot and Yellowtail and mm-hmm. Cabot and mm-hmm. Sutter Home and things right, like that. Exactly. Like, it's cost efficient. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But you want to you wanna start playing the game, mm-hmm. you know, you get higher in quality, you're going to spend a little more money. So is this typically how your wine tastings go? Just kind of pouring and educating, or like walk me through how you typically go yeah. about those. I mean, it's a it's a whole curriculum, okay. right? It's a step by step. It's like classroom. Yeah, it's like yeah. really holding a classroom. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't give you the whole class, right? <laughs> yeah, <sure. laughs> no, no, you, you got to come in and get yeah. black on. You got to pay for that. Oh, you got to pay for that wine. That's the perfect that. answer for the camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, you want to know? Come find out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. As we as we talk, you know, I'll, I'll throw some things out there, yeah. but um, yeah, it's, it's literally a class, man. It's a class. Um, we usually do on Fridays. We do our basics. Well, I hate to use the word basic, but just like the foundational classes, those essential class mm-hmm. where um, black owned wines, and we teach people how to identify wine. Like literally, I can look at it, I can smell it, I can taste it, and I know that's what it is. Um, that's what Fridays are. Saturdays we do more specialty classes. Okay. So, um, like I said, the the cognac and cabernet, that'll be a Saturday class. Um, we did a um, a, a old world, new world class, basically mm-hmm. like old style of wine, old style of wine making versus new style of wine making. Exactly. Just like what's old world. Basically, old world is Europe. Okay. New world is everywhere else. Gotcha. Gotcha. Right? So, the early ages of it, how it was being made, the type of wine, versus how it's made now for the U.S. consumer. How long are the classes typically? Um, 90 minutes. Oh, yeah. That's, hell, yeah. You're going to learn something. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to learn something. 90 minutes. Sure. Um, we do COVID testing when you come in. So, mm-hmm. you know, we leave a... We leave about an hour. So we tell people class starts at 6 o'clock. We leave about an hour to do the COVID test, 15 minutes to get your results back. So you figure you put 20 people in the room, you need that hour for everybody to settle yeah, in, yeah, get their yeah. results, take their mask off. You know, once you once you get your results, you can take your mask off. 
and then um, start class at seven o'clock. Nice. Very cool. So, like, I know we've been having some whites. Mm -hmm. I've been curious, like, what's the difference between, like, you know, like a, a burgundy or a Bordeaux? Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. Like, me, look, look, look. I go to the store. I buy something kind of sweet. And red. Yes, you buy mm -hmm. sweet one. That and I get red, but dry. See, and I don't like. I can't do. Dry. I don't like sweet. I just. I yeah, don't I don't like the sweet ones either. Like I was so mm -hmm. like Cabernet or like a Malbec. No, 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 I'm glad you said that. We're going to take a mile back from that. Exactly, you know what I mean? But we're going to go here first. What is that? Rosé. <laughs> okay. The biggest. <laughs> the biggest. <laughs> oh. You see the beards in there? <laughs> we in Philly, you see the beards? But <laughs> to answer your question, when you bring up Burgundy and Bordeaux, things like that, that's, um, that's old world. So new world, you'll see Cabernet Sauvignon, Sauvignon Blanc, Riesling, um, Pinot Noir, you'll see yeah, that yeah. on the label. Mm -hmm. Whereas though in the old world you get um, Bordeaux, Burgundy. So basically these are um, small wine growing regions in the old world. So you break it down, you have France, mm -hmm. but now you have Burgundy, you have Bordeaux. So when you think of like Pennsylvania, you have Philadelphia, you have York, PA, you have Pittsburgh, it's the same thing. Right, so there's a style of wine in Bordeaux. There's a style of wine in Burgundy. Each region. Yeah, yeah, and you get. Now, when you say style, what do you mean? Like, what makes so styles different? You got to you got to remember the geography is different okay. everywhere, right? Like when when we're getting certain, um, we have a certain climate in Philadelphia. Right. right. Um, Sheltenham might not have it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. A um, couple degrees cooler than Plymouth Meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, or Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Pennsylvania is different than Harrisburg. So Philly, you mean Philly is different than Harrisburg? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got you. Yeah. Roll on. So when you when you look at it that way, it's you know we're getting a certain level of wind. We're getting a certain level of sun. Um, our soil is different. Versus the soil. It's like, a, like deep, the rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Going, yeah. Uh, the, soil is, the soil is different over there. Um, so that's the differences between those, um, what we call them Appalachians. They call them Appalachians in France. So like an Appalachian would be um, Northern Liberty, okay. mm. Fishtown. Gotcha. It's okay. an Appalachian. Mm. So over there, like Fishtown and Northern Liberty could be totally different. The soil could be totally different. So it's going to taste this way over here. It's going to taste this way over here. Gotcha. Um, so that's, that's right. the differences when you start talking about like Bordeaux, Burgundy, things like that. And that's yeah. how I can get so extensive because you're talking about all these different mm -hmm. regions. Yes. And you, break it, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. So that knowledge is yeah. real. So it's like you'll get a wine that just says like, you know, it'll have, you know, France on it. But then you have something that may say Burgundy on it. But then you have something that may say... Um, Moray Saint Denis. Mm. Moray Saint Denis is in Burgundy. Mm. So it's like. Also, now it's down. Now it's down. It's down. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, it'll say Bordeaux, but then it, another one may say um, Poyac. So Poyac is in Bordeaux, but Poyac is a certain type of wine from Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. It's a certain place, mm -hmm. right? So again, Pennsylvania, break, Philadelphia, mm -hmm. Northern Liberty. Right, right, right. right. Okay. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and you can even go deep as like Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, North Philly, right. Northern Liberties. So the wine right. game like crazy on like really like repping your hood when you really get break, <laughs> break it down to it. Like I'm just saying when That's you really so break funny, it, man. like when you really break it down like we ain't from Philly but you'll be like I'm from Philly but I'm uptown actually Somerville or like you know you might be from Brickyard you get what I'm saying Logan yes. you get what I'm saying and mm -hmm. it's broken down That's, That's how, how the wine game is territorial like anything else you know what I'm yeah, saying yeah. The, the reason why I said it's so funny because one of my partners Amir he used this. Um, LA gang culture <laughs> to break down um, to break down wine and we all know LA gang culture it's like you know what's, you know where you from what set you from <laughs> so when you start talking about you know wine that comes from like Europe and places like that you know 
that's pretty much what it is. Like, um, it comes from this place. This, these are our, these are the restrictions in this place. Like, these are policies here. Like, this is how you have to make your wine here. This is how uh, much of a volume of grapes you can grow. This is how you can make it. This is what you can and cannot um, include in your winemaking process. <coughs> what happens if you violate some of these terms? You don't get the level of classification. So when you think of classification, it's like you start getting smaller and smaller. When you get to that Northern Liberties, right. you can charge a higher price. Mm. Okay. Right? Pennsylvania wine is a dollar. Yes. Philly wine is five. Yes. Northern Liberties. East Northern Liberties would be like $50. <laughs> <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so you know, you can you can charge more for that because it's um it's 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 like a, a smaller plot of right. land, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And these places over time receive these, you know, credentials basically yeah. because their soil is deemed better. That's mm. that's great. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um if we're you know if <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe so, and dying for that mud. Like, you know, bro, we, bro. we all of us could be wine producers, but if we're sourcing from a certain place and we're abiding by, you know, the policies of that place, you know, we can charge a little more for that because we right. got it from that place. And sometimes it's even a specific vineyard. Mm. So now we're talking about Mm -hmm. North Liberties, but now we're talking about Gerard Avenue. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like, if you're getting it from this vineyard, mm -hmm. like, they have been deemed to have some of the best grapes. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, I got a, I got a $50 <laughs> over here, but I got a $150 over here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, yes, yes. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad you said that. <laughs> <laughs> this is a crazy Did you grow up liking wine? Did kind of you, like, how did you get into the wine game? So, so we talked about earlier how, you know, it's definitely not something that's prominent in our hood, and mm -hmm. here you are, young brother, but, you know, obviously your wine knowledge wouldn't be questioned at this point. How did you get to this point? Oh, man. Um, a lot of wine. <laughs> a lot of wine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of drunk nights. Um, <laughs> I wasn't always tasting wine. I was right. drinking wine. Right. <laughs> um, Oh man! Like so your family? Do they are they? Wanted? No, 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 okay. no, no, no. My 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 dad, he, he, he drink a beer every here and yeah. there. Uh, my mom, my mom might drink some Pinot Grigio when she's cooking food, but it's mainly for cooking. You know, mm. she'll take a sip of it. My mom was, you know, she likes champagne. Okay, she drinks a lot of champagne. Uh, but no, I, I I really didn't see that growing up. It wasn't you know prominent in the household, whereas I always saw my mom with a glass of champagne. No, mm. it was just every once in a while. Mm -hmm. um, I honestly, um, I got into wine, this was maybe like 2000, 2007. Okay. Um, I was, uh, actually that first wine that y'all tasted, Sauvignon Blanc, that was the first wine I ever had. Um, mm. Inexpensive version, you know, uh, you know, inexpensive bottle, not, you know, what I just gave you, but um, I was drinking that with everything. I didn't know nothing about wine pairing at that point, so it's like, mm -hmm. I'm drinking that white wine with burgers and spaghetti <laughs> and everything. Um, so I was on a date, actually. And it's funny that the story kind of like all comes together now that we're like a black wine company. Because the date I was on, there was a black man on a date next to me at the table at the eat dinner, and he was drinking red wine. Mm -hmm. I never saw a black man ever drink red, red, red wine before. Right, mm -hmm. right. So I'm like, well, what is that? And I asked the waiter what it was, and it was uh, Merlot. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I ordered the glass of Merlot. And once I ordered that glass of Merlot, I literally stopped drinking white wine. <laughs> I was only drinking Merlot because at my mind at that point, you know, I was probably 20, 22, 23. Mm -hmm. um, like, this man was, like, suited up. He yeah. was, you know, he, he looked good. Like, it was aspirational. Right, right. And there was two women at the table with him. So I'm like, <laughs> so shit. Like, like, sophisticated people to drink. Yeah, myself, yeah. right? Gerson, uh, Merlot <laughs> Pink. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So, um, you know, I just felt like, you know, like, this is, like, masculine. This is what you do. You drink red wine. You know, men don't drink white wine, right? And now I'm sitting here drinking this black white wine. <laughs> um, but I... Um, I was just drinking a lot of Merlot and, you know, going to the local wine spirits, buying Merlot and um, sales rep. 
you know, they said, listen, you keep buying this Merlot, you know, maybe you should try out this. And he gave me a, a bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm -hmm. Cabernet Sauvignon and Merlot, they're, they're almost identical. They make them differently, mm -hmm. but the grape itself, polished grown, you know, um, they're almost identical. Okay. It's, it's, it's actually hard for Psalms to tell the difference in Merlot and Cab when they do blind tasting. Wow. Because they're pretty, they're pretty similar. Um, but they make cab a little differently. Cab fetches a higher price. It has a little mm -hmm. more structure to it. When I say structure, it's like um, Merlot might be a little more fruity. It might be a little more juicier. It's like a crowd favorite. Mm -hmm. Whereas though you get the cab, it may have, um, it may be a little more tannic. So it's drier. So mm -hmm. it may be drier, mm -hmm. right? It's like all of the elements of a great wine, they're kind of like hitting um, parallel to each other in a Cabernet versus where you get a Merlot, it's like the fruit is more dominant. Mm -hmm. You know, the um, how smooth it is is more dominant because more people will, um, it'll be more palatable for most people to drink that as opposed to something that's like good amount of acid, good amount of dryness to it, good amount of fruit to it. It's like, yo, there's so much going on, mm -hmm. some people can't handle can't that. Mm -hmm. Their palate is not mature enough to handle that. Mm -hmm. um, so I just started drinking a lot of Cabernet at that point. Um, you know, still at that point, a lot of drunk nights, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just knocking off bottles of wine, like the 1.5 liters, just like down them. Right. Mm -hmm. But, um, ultimately I always say it started when I went to New York and this was, uh, 2009. I went to New York. I went to a small wine shop. Um, I was out my lady at the time, um, you know, me in the wine at this point, I figured I go to a small wine shop in New York that probably had better wine than, you know, what's uh, mm -hmm. what's available to me. Um, so I told the guy, like, I drink this type of wine. I drink Cabernet. I drink Merlot. He said, listen, um, try this. He said, um, this is an introduction to what the big leagues are. And he gave me a bottle mm -hmm. of Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Basically, Bordeaux um, in the, the, the region of Bordeaux in France, they make uh, blends. Mm -hmm. So it's Merlot and Cabernet. It's a Merlot Cabernet, Merlot Cabernet blend. Mm -hmm. That's what a Bordeaux is. Right. It's a Merlot Cabernet blend. Um, or you can make straight Merlot, but if it's from Bordeaux, it's still called a Bordeaux. Okay. But typically what they do is they, they, they blend the grapes. And what happens is Merlot, um, it ripens very early, very, whereas though Cabernet ripens very late. Mm -hmm. So like the growing season, like from the time like the little buds break on the vine up until the point you get a whole grape that's like at the right amount of like acidity and sugar. Um, Merlot ripens earlier than Cabernet. Mm -hmm. So what they do is um, by the time harvest comes, basically when you harvest, you pick the grapes. Mm -hmm. By the time harvest comes, they get a lot of like bad weather in Bordeaux. Mm -hmm. A lot of like heavy rain, frost, things like that. Mm -hmm. And if your grape is not fully ripe at that point, even ripe grapes can get damaged, but grapes that are not ripe, um, it wipes them out. Mm -hmm. So if my Merlot gets wiped out, my cab is still here. Mm -hmm. So I can still make wine, right. basically. Mm -hmm. um, and they have different soil types on both sides. So think of like the Schuylkill River. Mm -hmm. You got West River Drive, you got Kelly Drive. Mm -hmm. One side of it is left bank, the other side of it is right bank. Mm -hmm. Right bank, they make more Merlot in their blend. Left bank, they make more Cabernet in their blend. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Right? So basically, they hedge both the grapes against each other so they can still have enough wine to make mm -hmm. moving forward. That makes sense. Let me ask you this. We've been discussing Merlots, Bordeaux, Cabernets, Sauvignon Blancs. <laughs> Chardonnay. Chardonnay. <laughs> what, what's your favorite? Do you have a favorite? It has to change. Ain't no way in hell. Yeah, that you like okay, the same thing now that you like in 2009. Okay, how about this? How about this? I want to know if you have a favorite wine, <coughs> and also what you tend to drink on the daily. I know you have to taste different things, Yes. but do you have like a, a go, go to? Go right? Yeah, yeah, So, it was Bordeaux. Well, let me take that back. It is Bordeaux. I will forever be loyal to Bordeaux. Yeah, I won't sure. ever be loyal to Bordeaux. Um, one, of the, <laughs> one of the greatest wines I've ever tasted, um, from the twenty dollar bottles to the three hundred dollar bottles. Okay, like I love Bordeaux, but 
Um, actually, what I was just drinking, uh, a white burgundy. So when most people think of burgundy, they think of Pinot Noir. Mm-hmm. So remember I was breaking down the Northern Liberties and yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Fish Towns and all that. When you see that on the label, you don't see a grape on the label. So when you see, I'll say Northern Liberties, but I'll just use another place in um, uh, like uh, Musini. When you see Musini on the label, you know in Burgundy the type of wine that they make in Musini. They're not going to tell you what they make because that's just not how they do things. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put the appellation on there, Mm -hmm. and now you have to know what grape that they specialize in, basically. Mm -hmm. You should know your area. (coughs) Basically. Exactly. Exactly. If you know, you know type of thing. Yeah. So um, lately I've been drinking a lot of white burgundy, which is Chardonnay from burgundy. Mm -hmm. So they call it white burgundy. Right, so you have to know where they make the white burgundy, at, mm-hmm. basically. Okay. Um, but white burgundy can get expensive. Mm-hmm. Um, so on the daily basis, I don't even have something I drink on a daily basis because I'm buying so much wine. Right. Mm-hmm. And I'm basically I'm practicing every day. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So at this point, it's just the mood. Like, okay, what am I eating tonight? Or what type of an event is it? Who am I with? Certain people, I might only pull out certain bottles mm-hmm. because you might not appreciate these bottles. Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I do. For, and for, I all, for all the viewers and for all the gentlemen out there, drop a gem on us real quick, right? You got a date. Yeah. One, you got two dates this week. Okay. One date, you're doing seafood. Yeah. The other date, you're doing whatever you want. Okay. You got $50 to spend on a bottle of wine. Okay. What do you buy? Now, two? wait, is the $50 for two bottles for both dates or you got $50, yeah. period? Each day you got fifty dollars for the week. What do you buy for the seafood? What do you buy for the red? Neither person is a serious wine drinker, mm-hmm. but you're trying to set that out and just have a nice little romantic evening. You're trying to feel like whatever the answers you get would be impressive. You know, there's more to the book. Ooh, you got me this. This ain't Taylor's Court. <laughs> that's, that's the goal. <laughs> so, this ain't set us home, you know. Right, right, right. Exactly. But but it's important because neither yeah. one is a wine drinker, especially it's important that the woman isn't a wine drinker, but mm-hmm. you want her to something that mm-hmm. um for the meat for the for the steak i would say yeah. if these are you know novice or you know beginning wine yeah. drinkers i would say a pinot noir from either california mm-hmm. or a place in um oregon called willamette mm. willamette valley <laughs> that's the, you know what I'm saying? Is that, that's so I can't wait to use that shit. You understand where this came from? I would say a Cabernet, but Cabernet is not, most Cabernets are not for the, like the beginner wine drinker. It's a lot, it's heavy. You get it from California, it's like. So it's like you don't think the beginner would appreciate it? I don't think, that, I, I think they may be turned off. Okay. okay. And, and we're not I, trying to do that. I don't, I, I, when anybody ever asks questions like that, I don't like to say, well, this is what I want. Go right to the deep end. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. you may, now you may say, you know what, I don't like wine. Right, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, I could have set up Pinot Noir from Burgundy, but it's a different monster. It's too deep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a different monster than if you got it from California. And what was the other place in Oregon? Or it's called Willamette. That's the Willamette. Right there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, I'm, I'm definitely um, getting some Willamette wine. wine. So I would, I would say that. Um, for the you know for like the red meat fish, um, I would go with a Pinot Gris. Gris. So <laughs> next <laughs> level. What the hell is that? Mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I've never even heard that. Yeah, yeah, right? I only seen Noir yeah. after that. You ever had Pinot Grigio? Oh yeah, yes. Uh, yeah, yeah. Pinot Grigio is actually Pinot Gris. Gotcha. The grape is called Pinot Gris. Gotcha. Yeah. Gris means gray in French. Okay. Grigio uh, means gray in Italian. Mm, okay. So it's, mm, the same, it's the same grape. It's just two different names depending on where it comes two from. Two different languages. Man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and getting a Pinot Gris, sometimes they will make it a little differently than making a Pinot Grigio. Um, so I would say a Pinot Gris, or I would say something like a, um, a Gewürztraminer. 
Does that sound like German? That sounds like a wrestling move. Exactly. That sounds sound like some German shit, shit, man, right there. <laughs> it's German. Um, Sauvignon Blanc. That's German. Damn, man. Come on, that's Sauvignon Blanc, I feel like, can be too acidic for a beginner wine drink. Mm. So I would go um, Gewürztraminer. Gewürztraminer is, um, yes, it's German. Right. That's what um, I don't think about when I think wine. Yes. Mm. Um, it it, it, it kind of lives in the shadow of Riesling. Mm-hmm. So a lot of people, it, it, you know, it's not really like talk of the town because of Riesling. Right. But it stands on its own. Is it in that section where Riesling is? Like, so I was going to look for that? You can get you can get it either from France or you can you can get it from like a northern France or you can get it you from talking about at the wine stores. Yeah, is, that, is that is that is that is oh. the same area? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's trying to buy some shit is what he <laughs> <on>. <laughs> You can get it from the French section. It'll probably be from a place called Alsace, so A L S A C E. But German, they usually don't have a German section yeah, in the yeah, wine yeah. shop, gotcha. so you would have to just go um, wherever you see like Riesling. Gotcha. It'll it'll be in there. It's usually like right next to it. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, cool. Yeah, I would, I would say a diversity meter. Um, it's easy drinking. Um, Depending on depending on the winemaker or depending on where you get it from, it may have higher acid, but usually the acid is pretty balanced. Um, tropical fruits, you know, Riesling sometimes can be on opposite ends of the spectrum. So uh, the sugar the the sugar content in it or the sweetness of it, it may not do well with certain foods. Okay. Like sweetness does well with spicy. Mm. So if you had like Thai sense. food. Indian food, mm. like Ethiopian food, mm-hmm. that's great because they balance each other out. They mellow each other out. Um, but if it's just like, I'm starting out with this, I'm going to go get me a piece of, you know, mm-hmm. some cod or a halibut or whatever the case may be, mm-hmm. um, I, I, I would say diversity. Mm-hmm. Diversity. What is the best wine you ever had? That's probably a tough one. The best wine I've ever had. Uh, Right now, it's a toss-up between this. Mm, that bottle just looks a little different. So Chaos Theory. This is Chaos Theory. Mm. Um, Brown Estate. So Brown Estate is the first and only estate, black estate owned. Nice. Right? So they own the winery and the vineyard. Mm. I like in, that. Yeah. In, in Napa Valley. Okay. So when we start talking about Napa Valley, you think talking like, about prestige. Yeah, Absolutely. right? Black family um, in dope. the 80s. Yeah. Um, their Chaos Theory is a blend of Zinfandel, I want to say it's uh, Merlot, Syrah. Ooh. Yeah, ultimately. Oh, yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely uh, <laughs> the chaos theory definitely is, 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 is always a higher percentage of Zinfandel, but um, it's a toss up between this. What's that, what's that running me like a Bino? Like, what, what, cause that sounds like a nice blend no, right there. Oh, you can get that. I want to say it might be. Sheesh, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I want to say between forty and fifty. Mm, that's not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, See, that's right in that number. You got that yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> we got some chaos in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> you know um, <laughs> Angwin. Angwin is another black home from uh, Napa Valley. Um, I believe he was a brain surgeon. Okay. And his family had had the land. His brother was like tending to the land, but, you know, it just wasn't going well. So he came back home and kind of like, you know, took things over. Great Cabernet is one of the best Cabernets I've ever had. Mm. Um, and this guy right here, man. Um, Don't be looking at me different in a second now. Could you bring me to the Angwin? <laughs> <laughs> this, <Yeah>. um, <laughs> you already this, know. Uh, this, I can't uh, wait. Opus One. Okay. Mm. Um, I thought that was the Alchemist, man. Yeah. <laughs> you have a, uh, you ever hear the Jay-Z lyric, I'm just getting better with time. I'm like Opus One. Mm. Um, one of the top Bordeaux producers Mondavi. and one of the top Napa Valley producers came together. They made a blend. Um, so they basically call this a Bordeaux blend because the Bordeaux grapes are in it, but they made it in California. 
one of the best lines I ever had. Um, this was, I want to say, this was around like 300 and something dollars. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. We had an uh, Opus One. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We, had a, um, we had a Jay-Z day here on Jay-Z's birthday. Okay. Uh, so uh, everything that Jay-Z raps about, um, we had a class on that. Opus One, you can see the Ace of Spades, mm-hmm. Duce, yep. um, okay, White that. Burgundy, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and White Burgundy. Okay. White Burgundy. Yeah, uh, I'm curious. I got to try that. Yeah, I'm in. I'm in all this shit. Man. Exactly. What you mean? I'm in love. I'm in love with white burgundy right now. Um, again, I wasn't. I wasn't like a big Chardonnay drinker because most Chardonnay. Chicks about to go through the roof. You probably getting it from um, from California. Uh huh. So the first time I had like a white burgundy, it just changed my you know my, my thoughts on what Chardonnay could taste like. Um, and it's another place in France. Uh, well, another place in Burgundy called uh, Chablis. Okay. So, I've seen that. Yeah. So um, Chablis, they make Chardonnay as well, but it's a little more like a little more crisp, a little more refreshing. Um, white Burgundy, it usually has a little bit of oak on it, so they age it in oak barrels, so it's a little smoother. Um, it's not as acidic. As something like a, a Chablis, so it just depends on depends on the mood, depends on the day. Um, but up until this point, yes, those are the those are some of the best wines I ever had. Definitely, yeah. yes, man. Yeah. Thank now you. we've had white. Yes, sir. Is there a red that you could yes, sir. Let us sample and then yes, sir. teach us the differences? He was talking about a mile back. He got back there somewhere. So what y'all just had that rosé? Um, I, I, I brought that out because we were transitioning. The bread mm-hmm. and um, I was thinking about it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let, let the <laughs> DJ do his thing. He's setting up the beat already. You know what I'm the, saying? Uh, the rose, rose is um, rose, rose is basically made from red, red grapes. Okay. okay. They just sit it on the skin for you know a day or two. What do you mean sitting on the skin? So when you make wine, when you take the grapes, you ferment it. Mm-hmm. So the fermentation process, it all sits inside. Mm-hmm. So it's sitting there, like white wine, the juice itself. But with red wine, they put they add the skins and the seeds. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So that's how you get the color. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, that's how you get the color. Mm-hmm. So rosé, that's how you get that tint because mm-hmm. they let it sit. Whereas the red wine is gonna sit a lot longer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's why the details, man. You know. Thank you. Yeah. So this and is uh, what is this? My back. Absolutely. My now we're talking. <laughs> My language, good brother. Yeah. Well, no, I am familiar with this right here. Yeah, these uh these classes, these classes been doing well, so I didn't have any um any cab or like Merlot just laying around, but I had this uh had this mob back. Absolutely. Mob back go way back. Mm. Yeah, mob back is another Bordeaux grape. Um Cabernet Merlot, Mob back. Cabernet Franc and Petit Verdot. So those are all the uh, Bordeaux grapes. Yeah. So we know what's the proper way to store our wine. Store. So when you're when you're storing wine, so wine is supposed to be stored at 55 degrees. Um, no direct sunlight, no heat. You red or white, regardless. Red or white, doesn't matter. Um, you want to put it 55 degrees. You want to put it somewhere cool, somewhere dark and cool. Hence wine cellar. Right? <laughs> right, right. Just like olive oil, right? Mm. They sell it in a certain uh, bottle, certain color because of the sun exposure. So, um, yeah, um, in your basement, if your basement is cool enough, mm-hmm. but um, I would always just recommend people to get a wine fridge. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you can get small wine fridges that hold 10 bottles, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you think of, like, wine cellars, that's a different ball game. Yeah. You know, the wine yeah. cellars that you hear about, like, they have temperature control. Right. You spend money on those things, yeah. you know? Um, matters. Like, the, you know, the, the wineries that have, like, wine caves and things like that, like, they're blowing up caves and, like, putting 40 feet, 50 feet down on the ground, you know, because the temperature down there is steady. Right. Right. Right? You want a steady temperature. You don't want somewhere where it's like hot one day, cold one day. Mm -hmm. 
you know, you're, 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 you're tampering with the wine. So, um, yeah, reds and whites, the ideal temperature is 55 degrees. Um, your whites, you can, when you take them out, you can chill them a little bit more after you take them out because you can serve it between, like, 40 and 50. So you can take it out. You can put it in a, you know, in, a, in an ice bucket, right. you know. Um, your reds, serve them at 55. Even upwards of, like, 60. You know, even if it sits for a second, the temperature starts to go up, it doesn't matter. But um, ideal temperature, yes, 55 degrees. Nice. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So what am I, what is in this one? What am I smelling here? Sneeze, you've had it before. I mean, to me, it's like a stronger type of grape that kind of sticks out to me a little bit, you know. Um, I'm, I'm in love with this white burgundy right now, but I'm going to take a little bit of this just so I can pull out some, some notes with y'all. I mean, what can I smell? You know, you this <laughs> shit and you're sniffing it, but it can't be cranberry, but I feel like I smell cranberry. Oh, listen, I'm telling you, man, it's, it's no wrong answer. Like, literally the first thing that comes to your mind is no wrong answer at all. You said you smell oak. Yes. Yeah. Get some of the oak barrel going on in this man. Like it's been aged a little bit or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Should I smell an orange? Is that weird? Should I not be smelling that? Like yeah, tripping. That's what you smell. So I hope you got him when he did, did that shit. Yeah. <laughs> Professional. Exactly. Exactly. He aged the joint. He so put the hand. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Honestly, I had. So I had COVID in December, and my sense of smell is not 100 percent yet. Okay. So. I'm trying to block all these mm -hmm. aromas from mm -hmm. going anywhere, so I'm just like covering. But it's, it's that's why I have my own glass. Like these are the glasses we have in the tasting room, but I brought this glass because this is the one I drink in the house, mm -hmm. and I'm I'm smelling better out of this glass. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's why I did that. But um, you definitely smell oak though. I see you pondering. Yeah, I'm trying to trying to figure it out. First time I just come in here, man. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty damn tasty. And smooth. Smoothy amount. Yeah. yeah aside from like the, the, the grape, I think they have, like they, they have like this grape apple kind of. I'm trying to. There's got to be some other notes in there. Man. You know what I mean? Something else. <laughs> I think you good with those two, man. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't overthink it. You know what I'm saying? You get to the point, you be sniffing it so much, you feel like you like snort something. It's like, oh, I'm choking. <laughs> yeah, when you when you start getting into these um these wines that are deeper in pigment, mm -hmm. you gotta start thinking of those grapes. Mm -hmm. Right? So your blackberries, your blueberries, That's um, what I was saying. Like sometimes it's even fruit. sometimes it's even dry fruit. Depending on the grape itself. Blueberry. I mean, depending on the wine itself. Yeah, you say blueberry. Yeah. Yes. And this is why I don't tell people what you yeah. must smell. Because yeah. when yeah. I say it's blueberry, everybody's oh, like, yeah, you're right, yeah. blueberry. Good answer, good answer. Yeah, answer. Good answer. Good answer. I didn't get yeah. that. I just knew yeah. it was like a stronger <laughs> grape. It just seemed like to me, like yeah. something, man. Um, you know, you might get like dark, like a dark cherry, mm. something like that. So it, it really depends. Mm -hmm. But again, it's practice. Mm -hmm. yeah. You don't eat blueberries every day. <laughs> right, or, right, you right. know, you're not going to know. You're only going on your experience when you had it, which was mm -hmm. right when you was like 10 years old. Or right, right, right. So right. It, it's and you drink a wine, so you inherently only think grapes. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. it's just hard to break outside of that box. Like, yeah, it's I awesome. smell the shit out of grapes. Like, everything else is like yeah. the homies to grapes. But I'm <laughs> grapes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like every, every class. Like, what you smell? Like, I smell, I smell grapes. It's like, <laughs> right, right, right. Of course, <laughs> of course you smell grapes. He be thinking, you know. Yeah, right, right, right. Well, that's just going to be a long class. That's, 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 that's what we're here for. That's what we're here for. Yeah. Yeah. I got to educate him. Right. Mm. That's now, we talked about, like, the, the best wine you've ever had. Mm -hmm. Threw out some prices to different wines. I thought about this myself because I know you're a father, too. Is uh, there yeah. a wine that you have stored to the side for your daughter's wedding? Ah. Some kind of special occasion. Like, what are you throwing in the cut? Because it's so good, it's so high quality. This um, is just for a special occasion. So, mm. I have, I have some white burgundies. Yeah. See, we got that. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. I have some white burgundies in the house. Um, some Bordeaux. Mm. 
uh, Bordeaux tend to age pretty long, so you can hold a Bordeaux, you know, twenty years. Wait, wait. So there is. I didn't know that there was a limit on how long you can. Depending on the wine. Oh, really? Yeah. So wines that have high acid, they preserve well. Wines that have high tannins preserve well. So basically, that dryness. Yeah. Um, there's some wines that are like extremely, what we say, uh, astringent. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's like a drying factor. Basically, it comes from the, the skins and the seeds, mm-hmm. but then it also comes from the barrel itself. Mm-hmm. So like some grapes, they have thicker skin. Mm-hmm. So that those thicker skin grapes, depending on how long the winemaker let it sit, it's going to be extremely tannic. They call them tannins. Um, they age well. And then wines that have high alcohol age well. Mm, okay. Um, you know, um, so Bordeaux, like Cabernet, Merlot, these big grapes, they age well. Um, wines that, like I said, have been um, barrel aged for an extensive amount of time, they age well. Wow. So, oh, so um, whatever. You can just, as long as it was old, you know, no, they any wines no. age it, they all can well, you, you, It's basically, you think of food, you think of preservatives. Right, um, you uh, you buy produce, you let it sit for a little while, and it spoils. Right, mm-hmm. it starts to disintegrate. There's too much air hitting it, it's oxidizing. Right. So you think of preservatives and food. So high acid, high tannin, high alcohol. Those are the preservatives that let it, you know, age over time. Yeah, yeah. Bro, we have educated the shit out of people on this camera right now. Like, if you were thinking about where you need to go to sample some wine and get some education about wine, you don't need to even think about it no more if you watch Black this Oak because the answer <laughs> is right here. Black right? Oak Wine <laughs> Club. <laughs> All right, real rap, man. Real, real and I salute, to that. salute to that. Salute, man. Salute to that. Man, you gotta know many what's success. What's man. in the future for Black Oak Wine Club? Oh man. So, again, we're in the process of getting the licensing that we need to be able to sell wine by the glass. And at that point, we will be a fully operating wine bar. Mm-hmm. You know, just like any other wine bar, you come in, you buy your glass, music, catch a vibe. Um, also, at that point, we'll be able to sell our own wine. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we'll be getting our own wine made. You can buy our wine by the bottle from us. Um, that's the that's the focus right now. Mm-hmm. That's the focus right now. Um, travel, mm-hmm. you know, we have um, one of our partners. He focuses on travel. So when we did, um, we just did a trip to Punta Cana not too long ago. When we launched Black Oak, we did a trip to the Finger Lakes, Finger Lakes, New York. Mm-hmm. They are actually, you know, one of the best regions to get Riesling from. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, travel. Um, but the, the wine bar, that's the focus right now. That's the focus, man. Um, we're here every weekend. We're doing classes. So once the wine bar opens up, you know, we'll still do classes, but it probably won't be every single Friday and Saturday. Mm-hmm. It'll be more while we're here. You got the yeah. wine bar, you get the glass, you know, we chop it up while we're here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, that's the focus right now. Yeah. So how does one sign up for a wine class? So you go online, you go on the website, uh, blackoak.com, so that's B-L-A-C, no K, mm-hmm. um, B-L-A-C-O-A-K, blackoak.com, and you can go under uh, events, Absolutely. and you'll see all the class, you'll see the class schedule for the whole month. Okay. So every month, we put we put a whole, we put the full month schedule out, so you can, you know, choose at your leisure, you know? Okay. Yep. Excellent. Yep. And you got this good brother school in your way. Yeah, yeah, so, um, we've been about... I want to say at, 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 at average, like 70% mm-hmm. of the classroom full. Mostly women. Most right? classes, mostly women. Yeah. Fellas. <laughs> mostly women. Come yeah. on out. That's where they at, man. Where on the weekend, yeah. you, you know you want to go where they are. Stop yeah. looking for the twerkers and get with the sophisticated <laughs> ladies that do twerk after they have some good wine. <laughs> Come on, man. Get your woman yeah, you know saying? between a burgundy and yeah. a Bordeaux. You got to drink the wine, then twerk. Exactly. There you go. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. a method to That's it, man. Operations. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, productivity, yeah. man. That's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. listen, man. <laughs> yeah. yeah, listen. It has truly been a pleasure, your See, brother. Man, oh, every time I grab this, I'm, I got to remember, like, the stem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
You got a little etiquette. Mm -hmm. We all got a little bit of etiquette. And all of y'all better get some etiquette from out there from off of this. Because if you don't, then you need to come straight to the Black Oak. All right? Nowhere else to go if you're in the Philly area. All right? Black owned. And that's what's happening. And that's what it is. Did I say it's the boss podcast that is? And we everywhere. If you didn't know, boss leaves the hustler all day long. You know what I'm saying? My man stop here all day. The stizzle in the building. Ty, a.k.a. Sky Ray, and the good brother. Clap it up for the good brother. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Exactly. I was going to let him say it. I ain't fucking it up before we leave. Out here. You know what I'm saying? That's real when your title is that. The summer, yeah. And, and, and of summer, course, we give it both our report. You got to be right. And, and real quick, summer, summer, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. shout cool. out to Dread on the lens all day long, panning. He's been doing this thing all day. He'll get some more wine and get a little, little tipsy at the end. But yeah. listen. You know where to check for us at, man. The Grand, Spotify, YouTube, everywhere is where we at, man. It's the boys. Appreciate y'all. Catch y'all on the flip side, man. Everywhere! Four.